Hey there everyone, my name is Corey. Welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So my wife and I bought a new RV and this weekend here we're going to be going to pick it up. And since we've been researching this for a while, I know one of the first things that we're going to need to do is put some tow mirrors on the truck. So when you're towing a 30 foot trailer, these little small standard mirrors aren't going to work for our application. So we decided to go ahead and purchase a set of aftermarket tow mirrors off of Amazon. They're going to be the most plus power folding heated tow mirrors. So this application is basically going to be for a 2014 through the 2019, I believe it's called LD or Classic GMC Sierra and Silverado pickup. The options that I have actually on my vehicle is I have the blinkers in the mirror. I have the puddle light underneath. They are power folding. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but they are, they also are heated as well. So the first thing you want to do is get everything unboxed and check everything for damages. Now my mirrors came in undamaged and everything looks good on them. So I'll go over the options of these mirrors and show you what they came with. Now when I ordered my mirrors, I ordered everything with the options that I had on my vehicle. I have the blinker in the mirror. These are heated. Um, these do not come with a puddle lamp, but they have the, the rear flood. I call it a flood lamp or a clearance lamp. And they also come with the marker light on the back side of the mirror. They also came with eight 10 millimeter nuts. It also came with a diagram, came with the plug and play part of the wiring, which is attached to the mirror. And then we also have these extra wires here, which we'll go over a little later on. This is gonna be for the clearance lights on the back of the mirror and also the floodlights themselves. Some of the items you're gonna to need to do this project is gonna be some masking tape if you don't have magnetic sockets. Some electrical tape. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Makita drill with the clutch on it, because I we will be working with plastic things and you don't wanna to over torque these and end up busting your brand new mirrors. Also some uh, heat shrink for the wiring. Uh, you're gonna need a ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket, deep well preferably. Uh, you're also gonna need a seven millimeter socket, a quarter inch drive extension in my case. If you're using three eighths, that's fine too. Uh, a magnet is going to be helpful. We've got a 5 16 inch drill bit. Flathead screwdriver is going to be helpful. A couple of body, uh, body panel removal tools is going to be great. Some type of wire strippers. A couple of, I call them dental tools, but obviously they're just picks. Um, a soldering iron, obviously solder, and a pair of side cutters. So now that we've got everything organized, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to want to do is disconnect the battery. All right, now that we got the battery all disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and take the door trim panel off. You're gonna to wanna to take this access cover off here. You got one down here in the handle, and then we're gonna take this off as well. So I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed, but there's a little notch. You're gonna take your, your pick. There's a little notch down there at the bottom of the spot. You just get underneath of it and pull it out. So if you can see, there's a little hole down there at the one in the handle. You just get your pick underneath that and lift up and that should release that one. For the one here, you're gonna to wanna to get your fingers underneath this and just pull out. And then this one will pop right off as well. So next we're gonna take out the seven millimeter bolts. There's gonna be six of them, one right here behind the door handle. There's gonna be two down here in the, in the pull handle pocket. Just above the speaker, there's one way back in here. And then at the bottom of the door, there's one here and one here. First one we're gonna take out is right here behind the handle. And now the two that are in the pull handle. The two at the bottom of the door. And now for the one that is very deep back in the door panel, we're gonna take a piece of masking tape because I don't have a magnetic socket. Gonna put it over that end there. We're gonna come over here, put it back in there, get it fit on the nut, and pull it out. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your plastic body tool, or if you got a metal one, just put some masking tape on it. Put it in between your trim panel here. Get your fingers up underneath the door panel and just give it a quick yank. It should pop loose. Then you're gonna to wanna to do that all the way around the outer edges of the door. Now 
So next you're going to want to disconnect your pull cable for your handle. You'll just push down on this lever here, push a little forward, lift up, and then pull it out sideways. And then you'll see the little balls connected over here. Turn this and then lift the ball out. Disconnect your mirror switch. There's a little button at the top here. You just depress it and pull down. Disconnect the main wiring harness. There's a little red switch here. Pull down on that. There's a little black tab right in the center of this gray button lever. You push in the tab, pull down on the lever, and it should disconnect. Now the next step in this process is to go ahead and take your upper door trim panel off. There is a little body plug here. Just get your, your little body plug, kind of twist, pull it out, and you obviously can see that this pulls out and the lip rolls around. You kind of got to curl it over and down and it'll pull right off. And then you've got another body plug here that you got to pull out as well. So just take that out, kind of twist and pull at the same time, and this will pull right off. All right, now that we got all of our wires disconnected, we're going to go ahead and hold on to our mirror out here. I'm going to try doing this with the camera right here. Loosen up your nuts for your mirror. There's three of them on this one. Like I said, this is a half ton. So it only has three. Now, if you had towing mirrors prior to this, my guess is you're going to have already have a hole right here. So if you're just doing a replacement because one got broke or something like that, then you won't need to drill the fourth hole. And then you got to snake this, kind of pinch this and snake this wiring through that hole there. Come on this side, kind of wiggle it and pull it through. All right, so you see that little circle there? That's where you need to drill your fourth hole. Now, if you've got it handy, and I would suggest you actually do this anyways, go ahead and get yourself some self-etching primer and throw on that bare metal. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is put the aftermarket mirror in. We're gonna slide the wiring in. Before you start this, I would recommend you grab a couple of the nuts. I'm going to go ahead and use three of the four uh, factory nuts on this because they're just a little bit better nut as far as I'm concerned. Put your rubber grommet in your hole for your wiring. Pull it through. I'll line up your mirror as best as possible. Push it out a little bit and then reach around. At least start a couple of 10 millimeter nuts on your studs. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get these all tightened down. I decided to use a hand wrench. That way I'm not over tightening them. The next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be connecting up our floodlights and our clearance lights for the back side of the mirror. First thing we're gonna do to make this a little easier is go ahead and take this speaker out. We're gonna loosen this bolt here and then take the speaker out so we can get easy access to the wiring harness that's inside the door. Can take your wire retainer off, pull up on the safety clip, push down on the button and just disconnect it. Now this step here is going to actually be optional, but it, I found that it makes it a little easier. Just push in on these, go ahead and drop that through, push your plugs through the hole. And then bring them down out through the speaker hole. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this out and then we're going to want to loosen this grommet from the door and then we're gonna push this in through the door and down to the speaker hole. Now again, this is optional, but it does make it easier to run the wiring. On top of the grommet that is actually attached to your hinge pillar right here, press on the top of it, and you can pop that little, the seal out. You can see there's a little plastic hook in there. Maybe you can't, because the lighting is terrible, unfortunately. But I'm doing my best with what I got here, so. You'll see this violet covered latch here, and you can kind of just take a trim panel tool and just pry it open and it'll pop loose. That you actually shove down and then you can pull the pull the wiring harness away from the hinge pillar. Next you're going to want to move that grommet through the door shell there. Best thing to do is actually reach in through the speaker hole and kind of pinch it and you'll be able to tuck it through. 
Now I've watched several of these videos and many people decide that they're just going to pop poke holes through this grommet here and they put a ground down on the bolt down here. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, it's just their way of doing it. I choose to do it a little neater and a little more so it looks a little more factory like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the sheathing here run the actual wires through the grommet where it came from. I'm actually even going to keep the sticker and then unwrap all this tape here on both sides. And then the only thing I am really going to do is I'm going to make a slice right here in this back side of this grommet because otherwise it's pretty hard to get the wires through. So our next step is going to be to put in our accessory wire. This is going to control your cargo lamp, which is the white wire, your clearance lamp, which is the blue wire, your black with a white tracer is going to be your ground and your red with the yellow tracer is going to be for your in-mirror blinker. The only two you're going to want to run through this grommet is actually going to be your blue and your white. All right, we got those through. Now we're going to pull those till you got about six to eight inches on this side of the grommet here to utilize. If you want to leave it a little longer, that's fine too. All right, so now that that's done, we got the wires ran through, got lots of Lots of length there. Got probably about six to eight inches, maybe a little bit longer. And this side, along with your other plugs, and then your black and your orange wire over here, or excuse me, your red wire. And then I'm going to take and run this wire all along that loop there. And now we got to feed it through this grommet here. Probably easier if you take this actual brace out. Um, it just basically folds over the rubber. And that way you can pull the rubber back. Just pull it off the, the terminal there. And then you can fold this over and it's a little easier to get them wires through there. Now in order to get it through this little grommet here, i am actually got a wire with a little hook on the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and shove it up through. It makes it super easy that way. I'll tie a little, little loop in the, this end of the wires, hook it onto that loop, and then I'll go ahead and pull them through. All right, and that's all done. Now we're just going to get this taped up and then we're going to start, we're going to put the little pins on and then we'll add those to the, to the hinge pillar connection. Next, you're going to want to run your wires through the latch so they come out that way. We're going to go ahead and take a pair of side cutters and cut that little zip tie that's there. We'll replace that here in a bit. Got that in there. And then basically you're going to want to cut your length for your for your two wires. I usually cut it just a little bit past the actual terminal itself. Now we're going to go ahead and strip these two wires on the end. You don't need to strip very much off. So we can put the terminals on the end of it here. Maybe about a quarter of an inch or so, three-eighths of an inch or so. So these are the terminals that are going to go on the ends of those wires. I did get these on eBay. They were about five or ten, five or six bucks, I think. Go ahead and put one of those on each wire, and then we'll go ahead and get them plugged in the correct spot in the in the terminal. So now that we got those ends on, we'll go ahead and run these back through the latch here, and we're going to get them set up to put your put your terminals into the wiring clip here. Now these are numbered. You're going to want to go blue is going to be in spot number 11. And if you look on these, you may have to get a magnifying glass, but that's going to be spot number 11 right there. So basically it's going to be one, two, three, four, five spots back from the end. So, but before we do that, this little on the end here, there's a little thing. You're going to have to push that lock latch in. You'll hear it click. And then it pops out on this end. We'll refer this to the, as to the GM end. We're going to take our blue wire and take the flat side of the terminal there, which is going to be this side. I know that's probably hard to see. There's little legs on one side, little legs right here, and those basically clip in, and then this side's going to be flat. If you kind of look on the other other side of the terminal here, you can see how they are how they're sit, uh, situated inside the inside the bracket there, and that should be it. But you're going to want to take the flat side of the terminal and have that facing towards the GM when you put it in. 
Here we go, that one's in. So blue goes to a number 11. And then two behind that, which is right here. On my truck, it's got a yellow wire with a black tracer in between the two. The white wire is going to go into spot number nine. So when you got those back in, just go ahead and click the click the latch so that way it clicks down. And then we're going to go ahead and zip tie this back up and then we'll be ready to install this back into the hinge pillar there. All right, so we got our wires in there. We've got our zip tie back on. Don't forget to put your little uh, bracket back on. And basically that'll slide over here. You can see the little hook that goes that part goes down to the bottom. You'll slide that back on and then fold your rubber grommet back over it. All right, now we're gonna slide our hinge pillar wiring back up into our door, and then we'll go ahead on to the next step. So after you get it all taped up, this is what your door wiring harness should look like. You should have your red and black wire, your blue and white wire be leading down your harness here. I've already taped mine up. We're gonna go ahead and feed it back and put the grommet into the hole here. Go ahead and put our speaker back in, put your retainer, plug your mirror in, don't forget to push in the safety latch, pretty much just hooks onto the bottom of the door, clips in, and then an 8 millimeter screw to tie it down. Alright, so next we're going to address the red wire with a yellow tracer and the black wire with a white tracer. What you're going to want to do is the small male plug, the four pin plug that's coming off of the 18 pin plug. You're going to want to take your side cutters and go ahead and clip the black wire and also clip the red wire as close to the four pin plug as you possibly can. Because basically we're going to be wiring those into the auxiliary plug on these two wires. Now a lot of people take this black black uh, wire with a white tracer and they will route it down to the bolt now that's down at the bottom of the door by the speaker and just put a hook on it and ground it out that way. But I'm already going to be splicing in the red wire with a yellow tracer so I might as well do the black one as well since it's a ground anyways. I don't understand why people do that but you know. I guess it is what it is and it's good enough for who it's for. All right, so now that you got your two wires off of your 18 pin plug that comes from your mirror, comes down your mirror, down to the 18 pin plug, and like I said, you'll trim those two wires, the red with a yellow tracer and the black with a white tracer, as close to the four pin plug coming off of it as you can. As you can see, I got them clipped there. Leave the blue and the white wires attached. Put that one out of the way for a second. Now take your auxiliary plug, the one with the blue and white wires that you put into the door hinge pillar, and you're going to trim that down. Uh, probably, you know, four inches or so. Go ahead and get those wires all cleaned up on the end and get them prepped and ready for solder. Now we're going to take our mirror wiring. And those two wires that you just cut, that you just cut on your 18 pin plug, we're going to go ahead and connect the black and white, the black with a white tracer together. And your red with a yellow tracer together. So now you got your 18 pin connector connected to your auxiliary connector, four pin male connector that goes into the door. Your other one off the mirror, your other, the female four pin connector, you can probably see I screwed up and cut the wrong one up. At one time I did repair it and soldered it already. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up in tape just to make sure I got it good anyways. So this is basically what you should be left with. Your auxiliary plug, white and blue, going into the door. The black and white and the red and yellow into the 18 plug. Now here's another optional part that some people may choose not to do. Since this four pin male plug that's coming out of the 18 pin plug coming off of the mirror isn't used anymore. I'm going to go ahead and take these two wires right out. There's really no need for them. And basically you just take your body pick, get up underneath this white latch 
pull up on it and then see which and um, see which side they go to they're the number one and number two up here and you can just push them out all right now that plugs all gone don't have to worry about that everything's in nice and tight now basically you're just going to plug in the remaining four pin male to the four pin female make sure the colored wires line up and you can see there's a latch on the side mine's a little melted i hit it with a soldering iron but it still works and then you just plug that in Make sure it's tight. Plug, you can plug your 18 pin connector from your mirror into your door and you're pretty much all done. So when everything's said and done, this is pretty much how everything's gonna look. I went ahead and put a zip tie there to take up the slack, but it's all nice and professional looking. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna temporarily attach our, our door trim panel. Just plug the wires in, make sure everything works before we put everything back together permanently. Okay, so let's test her out and see how she does. Down, up, left, right. Works great. Power fold. It's working. Let's turn on our blinker. Mirror blinker is working. Turn on the cargo light. Cargo light is working and the clearance lights are working. So let's go ahead and get all this door trim panel reattached, get everything put on where it's supposed to be, and then wrap this job up. So that's gonna wrap this video up for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope I was able to teach you something. If you got any questions, please go down in the comments, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Thank you all for watching, have a good day, and God bless.